Uh, because I love roller coasters, Jeep took me to Lotte World. <laughs> My birthday was on Saturday and it was very cold winter. All the indoor rides had a line about four hours long, but he really hate lines. <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, after a while, they were outside and they got frozen and the line wasn't moving much, so they left without enjoying the riding. And then, I don't know why, but I always remember that first day. An idea occurred to me after listening to the story. Do you know the TV program One Night Two Days? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a message from that the Mr. Kang said, uh, where to go is not so important. What to do is not so important. The important thing is who you are with. <laughs> That's why I still can remember that not so interesting memories. <laughs> Next speaker is Ken K. Lee. Is his evaluator, Kelly, will you introduce about the speech? Yes. <laughs> Ken Drennan will be speaking from a, is it an advanced manual? We don't have a manual today, but an advanced manual called Let's Get Personal, and it's about storytelling. And just like any good stories, I think you should focus on his plot and characters, and that the story wouldn't be boring, that it's actually attention getting and enticing. And we look forward to it. Please welcome Ken. BT was my brother's best friend and also the best man at my brother's wedding. And as he got up to deliver his best man's speech, he said, Don has always been there for me. I want to tell you about a story where he really was there for me. I was at his house one day a few years ago and we were having a good time and then there was this yelling from the front gate. Man of the house! Man of the house! Before BT continued with this speech, I knew exactly what he was going to be talking about. It was an event that nobody had ever talked about since. And I was very excited to be getting BT's side of this story. I was about 10 years old. BT and my brother were about 17. And my day started at the swimming pool. My mother always gave us kids about $5 to go to the swimming pool. And you never wanted to pay $2 for a locker because there was only $3 left for candy. <laughs> so we put our $5 in a shoe and kind of concealed that under some t-shirts and all that, which is not, not too smart. Um, and we went swimming. We came back and things were ruffled and the money was gone. <laughs> and these kids we didn't like were there. And one of them said, did you, did you lose something? I think you lost something. That guy knows who it is. And then he's like, yeah, yeah, I heard about that. That guy knows who it is. And so we realized quite quickly that our $5 was, was gone. That happens. That's a lot of, lot of candy. That's a really hard thing to live with as a kid. When something gets taken from you like that. We continued home. And just as we were almost home, there was this little kid. And he said something that I probably didn't like. And I, I said, God, get lost. I might have even sort of pushed him out of the way. And then he manufactured these tears from nowhere. He's like, ah, I'm going to tell my father, I'm telling my father. And he, he, he went and we, we went home. And we got home and BT and my oldest brother were there. And we were laughing and somebody said, did you pee in the pool again? <laughs> <laughs> I said, of course I did. <laughs> and, uh, everything was going wrong. And then we heard this yelling at the front gate. Man of house! Man of house! Come out here! Wow, it was this kid's father. 
and he was a huge beast. He was a huge, angry looking, hairy beast. <laughs> and he was calling for the man of the house, but um, Dom and BT went out. So he, he sent for the man, but instead two boys went outside. <laughs> and BT, you know, he, he, he went out the gate first to see what was going on. And as he went out the gate, the beast hit him with a, with a, a ride. And as I watched through the window and saw BT falling, I, I swear my heart stopped. One thousand. You never know in life when fate is going to send you some customers like this guy. You also wonder in an event like this whether this punch had been waiting for BT to walk through that gate all of these years or whether he just got unlucky. Three months out, four months out. This was the part that BT was talking about in his speech. Oh, I didn't know where I was. I was on the ground and I was, I was like, where am I? I was trying to shake this off and this big beast is standing above me. And then Dom grabs this guy. He grabs him from behind and the beast, he goes away from him. And I'm still trying to work out where I am. And then Dom, he, he's fighting the beast, and he says, get up, get up, come on, we've got to go, we've got to go. I was kind of watching this from the, from the window, and then I saw Big T get up, and they, they ran. It was, it was very surreal, it was like watching some an initiation ceremony, it was like, it was like life was saying to these boys, it's time to, to go forth into the world. Somebody once told me, if you walk away, you live to fight another day. And that was pretty true for BT, because that beast was just about to finish him off. I also learned another lesson that day, that two boys don't add up to a man. I thought my brother and I were going to go out and kick that guy's ass. I was shocked. And as BT continued with his, his speech at the wedding, I thought about this beast teaching the only lesson he knew how to the wrong students. I saw these two boys running away from youth and innocent out into the, into the world to become men. I saw my empty shoe with no money in it and realized that I hadn't lost nearly as much as my brothers. And I saw the little crying boy and I wondered who was the best man in all of this. I wondered why was it that our guest, BT, was the first one to go out that gate into the danger. And I asked Dom, I said, well, how did that happen? He just said, oh, BT's an energetic guy. He, he, just, he just rushed out. The police came down shortly afterwards, and the beast calmed down. He was saying, my boy, I'm scared of my boy. They touched my boy. And my mum came right up to his, to his hairy chest and said, what about my boys, huh? Look what you did to my boy. I was very disappointed to see the beast walk home, but there was a lot of lessons. Life, you just never know when can knock you down when you didn't do a thing wrong and there's no right or wrong about it. You just got to get up like BT and move on. I was happy that BT hadn't forgotten, and we also had not forgotten. We never did quite get the beast back, but months after the event, one night at about midnight, me and my brothers, we went out into the back garden, 
with a six iron and a couple of golf balls. And we knew where the beast's house was about this way. One thousand, two one thousand, <laughs> bang! <laughs> <laughs> Three one thousand, four one thousand. 